GTN Radio. Hear the difference. Now the news. I'm Sui. Honduras has officially opened its embassy in Beijing following the establishment of diplomatic relations with China. Both Chinese and Honduran foreign ministers attended the inauguration ceremony. Speaking at the event, the Honduran diplomat says he expects bilateral ties to grow ever stronger. It will open new opportunities and capabilities to strengthen the cooperation between both countries and both peoples, and, and also the, to recognize the importance of the of one China principle. I think that is very important uh, to deepen, as I mentioned, this relation between two countries. The inauguration comes as Honduran President Xiomara Castro embarked on a state visit to China and the invitation of President Xi Jinping. Germany will host one of the biggest air deployment drills in NATO's history starting Monday. It's expected to draw 10,000 participants and 250 aircraft from 25 nations. Officials say the show of force is intended to impress allies and adversaries alike. Media say Sweden, which seeks to become a NATO member, will also take part in the drill. Meanwhile, hundreds of protesters have gathered in the Swedish capital to voice opposition to the move. I don't like this NATO, NATO. And we don't like to have war, and we don't trust them at all. They are just everywhere they are going, they are, it's a war coming. So they are, they are really criminal, they are making wars everywhere. NATO member Turkey has continued to block Sweden's bid to join the organization, citing political reasons. Media reports say several people are dead in shootings at two police headquarters in Vietnam's Dan Luc province. The country's public security ministry says six people are currently under arrest. Investigators are searching for more suspects. Media reports say fighting has resumed in the Sudanese capital following the end of a 24-hour ceasefire. Witnesses say gunfire was heard soon after the truce expired at 6 a.m. local time. Clashes between Sudan's army and paramilitary weapons support forces broke out in mid-April. The conflict has resulted in severe casualties. One local says food supplies and medical services have also been disrupted. Shops are still empty and goods of all kinds are in short supply. The goods in grocery stores around here were snapped up long ago. Hospitals are closed and we do not have access to medical supplies. That's the most serious problem facing us today. Estimates suggest over 2 million people have fled Sudan into neighboring countries. Local authorities say flood caused by the breach of the Kakoba Hydroelectric Power Plant Dam at the Nipper River is receding. The water level in Nova Kakoba City near the dam has decreased by 3 meters. The acting governor of the Hirsan region says efforts are underway to pump water and collect garbage from the streets. More than 6,000 people have been evacuated from the flooded areas of the Kherson region. The Karkovic hydroelectric power plant was destroyed on Tuesday, triggering massive flooding in nearby areas. Media reports say rain is likely to help clear up smoky air in eastern Canada starting Sunday, but may not reach the forest fires raging in Quebec until days later. Local authorities say there were over 420 fires across Canada on Saturday morning, with more than 140 of them in the French-speaking province. About 13,000 people have evacuated from towns in the region. The fires have ravaged millions of hectares of land on both the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. Peru is experiencing the largest dengue outbreak in the country's history. The South American country has reported over 130,000 infections, with the northern city of Apira becoming the epicenter of the outbreak. Local authorities say heavy rains have killed at least 25 people and injured over 140 in northwest Pakistan. Houses were damaged in several parts of the country. Pakistani Prime Minister Shabat Sharif has sent condolences to the victims' families. Relief efforts are underway. In tennis, world number one Iga Swiatek has captured her third French Open singles title and second in a row at Roland Garros. This came after she upset Karolina Machova of the Czech Republic in the final on Saturday. It was the fourth Grand Slam trophy overall for Swiatek. The Baton Road Film Week is underway in Shanghai. Is part of the ongoing 25th Shanghai International Film Festival. 20 films from home and abroad will be screened during this year's event. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative, as well as the 5th anniversary of the Belt and Road Film Festival Alliance. And that's the news. I'm Sui.